Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So in front of us we have the 2024 Toyota Sequoia Platinum. This one is finished off in silver. MSRP for the Platinum starts around $73,000. But we have a lot of options added onto this one that will drive up that MSRP. So let's start off with what powers the Sequoia. This has the iForce Max 3.4 liter twin turbo V6. It's paired to the 10 speed automatic transmission pumping out 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque. That power is sent to the rear wheels. However, this does have the four-wheel drive system. Even though it weighs 5,800 pounds, it'll do zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. And as far as fuel economy goes, you're looking right around 21 miles per gallon in the city and 24 out on the highway. Now, as we work our way to the exterior styling, in a lot of angles, this mimics the all-new Toyota Tundra. We basically just have that with a third row instead of the bed. Up front with the chrome Toyota badge, there's also blue indicating that this is a hybrid. This is paired with that electric system that pumps out around 48 horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque by itself, and then combined are the power numbers that I just mentioned. Now this has a forward-facing camera, there's a sensor up front for the adaptive cruise, plenty of cutouts in that gloss black grille with the chrome surround, this does have LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals, LED fog lights down in the lower section, along with all the sensors. There's a lower air dam too, even some cutouts and inlets right here with the gloss black trim, just to give this some better airflow. Now up top, really nice lines that come down the hood with these great contoured areas with the iForce Max badge. This has a set of 20 inch wheels, Finished off in a dark gray to match this silver with that multi-spoke design. There's gloss black for the fender arches, which matches that lower section. Platinum is finished off in chrome there. Check out these massive tow mirrors. There's a camera, turn signal, and these even extend outwards if you need more visibility while towing. There's gloss black that surrounds the window trim, sunroof up top, and really nice crisp lines that run down the side. One starts at that headlight in the lower section, back door handle to the taillights there. Now this has a body colored spoiler with that third brake light, wiper blade in the lower section, LED taillights, backup camera sensors, more gloss black. This can tow right around 9,300 pounds, which is very impressive for this SUV. Now as we work our way to the cargo space, check this out. You can open up the rear glass by itself. So if you don't have large items, you don't feel like opening up the entire lift gate, you can easily do that. Now there's three ways you can open up this lift gate. Use the key fob, use the button up underneath, or if you have the key on you, just kick your foot up underneath and you will hear it beep where it will open up. So if your hands are full of groceries, that's very, very helpful. Now the Toyota Sequoia is a three row SUV. As it's configured right now, not a lot of space behind the third row, but you can also push these forwards to give you more space. Sacrifice a little bit of leg room for the third row, but honestly, it's not that bad. And then you can easily slide these back. They are automatic, so use the buttons on the side, just push them once, and then they will fold down. There's a little bit of a step there, so you do have to take that in con into consideration, but check this out. You can actually adjust this to one of these three heights on the side. So if you want more of a flat surface, this kind of makes up for that. And you can slide this all the way up again if you want to have a, a divider or something like that. So it's actually kind of neat to see that. Just place that wherever you need to. With the push of one button, you can also fold those seats back up. And then up top, you can use the two buttons there to close and lock it or just close it, use your foot or the key fob. Now taking a look, at the back area again, we have leather on the door panel. There's also an adjustable sunshade that you can use as needed. A little bit of storage with a ton in the lower section. This has the power folding side steps, as you saw, were just deployed. And then we have captain's chairs for the second row. Now, in order to gain access to the third row, you could walk right through the middle. But if I grab this one handle, I can do everything with one hand. Very easy to do that. And then we have the staircase to jump up into this third row. So at five foot 10, honestly, it's not bad. You have drink holders, you have a little bit of storage on that passenger side, even adjustable sunshades for your third row passengers, which is neat to see. You can also recline these just by using this power button here. You can slide them forwards from under here too. 
So honestly, not bad. It's a wide vehicle, so three people would have plenty of space, just depending on how big you are, of course. But I could ride around here if I really needed to. And then you can easily get back to the second row, pop that up. For being such a massive vehicle, it's not that high. That sidestep definitely helps. But we have storage pockets, cup holders, heated and ventilated captain's chairs, all of your climate adjustments, so fan speed, temperature, where you'd like the air to go, and some more auxiliaries to charge even more electronics. There's cup holder storage and some more storage right in the middle. We have the adjustable armrests, these recline, of course, too. And I have around an inch or so, two inches above my head, so definitely very spacious. As we work our way to the driver's seat now, Door panels just like the rear, even more storage space. This has memory seating controls, all the window and side mirror adjustments. And then for the leather front seats, heated and ventilated, they're automatic too. And check this out. There's the automatic leg support that you can use as needed. As we work our way to firing this up, we have the leather and the perforated leather for the steering wheel. On the right side, there's mode and tuning, along with all the cruise and adaptive cruise control settings, distance pacing. Left side, you get volume, voice commands, and then all these are for the gauge cluster. So on the right side, you can monitor your iForce and your Max, so your turbos and that hybrid system, tack and miles per hour right in the middle. And then on that left side, this is where you can scroll through all of this information. So you have some trailering systems to monitor, your TPMS, you have a lot of standard safety features that you can scroll through. There's also any messages, you have your uh, trip or your fuel economy information, and then the compass there. Now on the left side, a lot of controls to go over. So this one on the far right is how you can extend those side mirrors. So if you're towing, you need that added visibility, just push on that button. There's also spotlights on the side view mirrors, all of the outlets you can send power to, there's the heated steering wheel, you have the adjustment for the side steps. So you can shut them off, you can put them on auto, you can also extend them as needed. There's a light in the rear, automatic headlights, fuel cap release, dimmer switch, odometer, and some of the safety features. This also has the JBL audio, we have the head up display, a little bit of storage up top with a 12 volt that you can use, and then this massive touchscreen system. Now there's not a ton of info that you can go through within the system but it is nice, you can pair your phone to it so that way you can go through all that info and then just pull up the rest of this information as needed. Underneath that, all the climate adjustments, even for the rear, heated and ventilated seats. We have the defrosters, all that information laid out well, volume for the audio. And then underneath that, there is a trailering system to help you back up as needed. If you click on the view button, all of Toyota's have this 360 diagram so that way, if you just need a second look real quick around the vehicle, just push on that button. There's traction control, hazards. You can even raise and lower this vehicle. So with the adaptive suspension, it'll show you low or high, depending on what you need to do. Wireless charging with more storage, e-brake and the auto hold. And then let's take a look at that 360 camera system because you have a ton of visibility with the guidelines that you can adjust to you can even go to the side view mirrors there and go all the way out. So you have no shortage of visibility, which is nice. You also have the ability to shift using the shifter. So if you're towing or off-road, you can quickly do that. Now we have the four-wheel drive selector, we have a tow and haul mode, and then a few different drive modes that you can scroll through. So it just depends on what you're doing for the day, basically the amount of throttle response that you need as well. There's two cup holders on this right side. And then for the center console area, you have an armrest on both sides, a little bit of storage in the middle. You have a little bit of storage in front of that, or you can open that up to gain quick access to underneath, or just push on one of the buttons on these armrests, and that gives you a lot more space. There's auxiliaries, coin holders, and plenty of room for all of your information. Plenty of room in the glove box too. We have some nice materials there. This is a action camera, so I believe just a dash cam that you can put in an SD card and utilize. We have that camera system for the rear view mirror, sunglass holder, dome lights, and the adjustments for that sunroof and the sunshade. And plenty of visibility over both shoulders, so it's very easy to see. And from second gear, here we go. And 
we're up to speed. Even coming around a turn, it carries its weight very, very well for the size of this. Now, the acceleration that I just did was in Sport Plus. There's a few different modes that you can go into all the way down into Eco Mode. So if I slow down again, we'll pop it back into second gear in Eco Mode. You can, of course, feel a slight delay in that throttle. So it is nice that you do have functional driving modes. You have the tow and haul mode too, if you have trailers hooked up behind this. So it is nice to see functional driving modes for this style vehicle. I had it in eco mode for the highway driving. Not really sure if that did help or not as far as MPG and everything like that, but it seemed to drive very nice keeping it in eco mode for highway cruising where you don't really need much throttle. You are just carrying your speed, of course. And with visibility, hopefully you can kind of tell. I wasn't at that stoplight very long, but you can see from this angle with the mirror there, just how large they are. They are functional, of course, uh, only if you really need them though, I think is if you should opt for those. But for the interior of this 70, $75,000, Toyota Sequoia, it is nice for the money. All the materials, as you've already seen, everything is easy to go through, pretty straightforward as well. Uh, so it's nice and simple, but it gives you what you need for a daily basis. So when you compare this to some other full-size three-row SUVs, there might be some others that will have more technology, maybe not quite as large though on the interior. You have the third row there that's actually pretty large, as you already saw and it's spacious. There's a lot of people that do like the functionality without the overkill of tech. And that's what you get with the Toyota Sequoia. With a lot of Toyotas in general, they're kind of basic, but they give you what you need. They're going to be a lot more reliable too. So with this Sequoia, this is something that you can daily drive and rack up tons of miles on. And one other thing that I wanted to talk about with this hybrid system. So we have the max icon on the far right, along with the battery charge. Now this Sequoia is not a plug-in hybrid, so it does use the engine in order to charge that system. What I have found interesting though, is with the bars on it, basically like your cell phone, you can see the bars for the level of charging. In our entire drive, both three and a half hours one way and then all the way back, that never got completely full, but it also never went below halfway. So it's very interesting to see the charge for it. It looked like it could charge, uh, not really out on the highway though as much. So I think mainly city driving is where you can get more of that charge. I have it back to one bar missing as compared to out on the highway where we had two, maybe three bars missing. So it's a very interesting system. It does use basically just that battery system by itself at very slow speeds. I believe it does help a little bit in highway situations, of course, giving it gas, things like that. It gives you that extra uh, electric torque and some of that and maybe out on the highway, it does kind of help aid in the gas engine as far as giving you better MPG while you're cruising. Uh, but it's an interesting system. It's nice to see but it's just interesting that it, it won't go completely dead, but I haven't been able to get it fully charged either. But you can't charge it by plugging it in, but it's there. So it's a really nice aid to see. The battery charge is kind of pointless, I think, because it's just kind of there in the background. Uh, so it's not something that you really need to focus on, but it is cool tech to have that aid the gas system. But that is going to wrap it up for the latest generation for the Toyota Sequoia Platinum. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.